This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for January 16, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, man dies after being stabbed at funeral, relative being sought. The St. Mary police are seeking a man who allegedly killed his uncle during a dispute at a funeral in Whitehall on Sunday. The deceased has been identified as 60-year-old Marvin Watson. Details surrounding the incident are sketchy, but it is reported that the men were at the funeral at the Whitehall Cemetery when a dispute developed. The funeral was for the nephew's daughter. It is further reported that the dispute escalated and Watson was stabbed by his nephew. He fled the scene. The injured man later succumbed. A police search was then launched to find the nephew as cops approved the incident. Fatal stabbing at a truck shop in St. Anne Four persons were stabbed, one fatally, during a dispute at a truck shop in Runaway Bay, St. Anne this morning. Details about the deceased are yet to be released by the police. The incident reported happened about 5 o'clock. It is reported that a dispute developed between persons at the location, resulting in four persons being stabbed. A security guard who was at the scene managed to disarm the attacker. In the end, one of the four injured persons succumbed to his injuries. The police say the dead man appeared to have been the aggressor. His death is the first murder to be recorded in St. Anne for 2023. Last year, St. Anne recorded 67 murders, which was an increase of 22% when compared to the previous year. Man accused of killing attorney Clover Graham used the fake address on bail bond, the court told. The Home Circuit Court this morning heard that the St. Catherine Laborer, who is to be tried for the murder of attorney at law Clover Graham, gave the police a fake address on his bail bond. The defendant, Coran Patterson, otherwise called the Q of Garden Pen in Spanish Town, who was to start his trial on Friday, has jumped a bail. This morning, when the matter was mentioned, a prosecutor informed Justice Leighton Pusey that the police made checks at the address in Belvedere, Red Hills, St. Andrew, where he was granted bail to reside, but no such address exists. One of his lawyers, George Stewart, further told the court that multiple efforts were made on the weekend to reach him and his relatives, but were not fruitful. Arising from his absence at court today, the judge ordered that the bench warrant be issued. Graham was found with her throat slashed in bushes at the Caymanus Estate St. Catherine on August 19, 2012, hours after she was reported missing by her family. The Crown is alleging that Graham, who was employed to the legal aid clinic in Kingston, was taken from her home and then murdered. An autopsy revealed that she died from an incised wound to the neck. Patterson was among three men who were arrested and charged with murder and a conspiracy to murder in October 2012 in connection to her killing. Attorney at law Zara Lewis is also representing Patterson. Graham was a lecturer at the University of Technology Jamaica and the Norman Manley Law School on the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. She also worked at the United Nations High Commission on Refugees Honorary Liaison Officer in Jamaica. Her murder came five years after her son, Taiwo McKenzie, and his girlfriend, Janelle White, were killed in a similar fashion by men who demanded a ransom after a motor vehicle crash. Two killed in Santa Cruz motorcycle crash Two men died as a result of injuries they sustained in a motorcycle crash on Main Street in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, early Monday morning. Their identities have not yet been released by the police. A police source said about 1.30 a.m. the men were traveling on a motorcycle when it crashed into a wall. The men were flung from the motorcycle upon impact. They were taken to hospital and pronounced the dead. Residents protest the poor road conditions near Manchester Clarendon border. Scores of commuters were left stranded Monday morning after residents blocked the Silent Hill to Alston Main Road near the northeastern Manchester and the northwestern Clarendon border. The residents are demanding that the deplorable roads be addressed. They are also calling for water to be supplied to their community. They used down trees and other debris to block the main road 
affecting the operations at the Moravia Primary and Alston High Schools, as well as the health center in the area. Fire personnel and the police have been working to clear the roadway. Taxi operator Pancho, who plies the Silent Hill to Christiana Road in Manchester, said it is a struggle to keep up with the operational expenses due to the bad roads. Another resident, Christian Isaac, told the news that she is fed up with the lack of attention on the roads and the calls for water. The people of Tapalstan are protesting today because we have no road, no water, and no street lights. Despite the fact that we are between two pump houses, we have no running water whatsoever. The roads are in deplorable condition. They are no longer potholes. They are called rivers. So we are out today protesting. We want our MP, Mr. Henriquez, to come out and do something about the condition that we are now living in. From Silent Hill, right back to Christina, be a patrol, it's a quick. Right now, we have to change squad, change rock and pin and rock and pin and ali. We have ball joint, tire them, rocking, all of them things now. You see me? So we use the water crisis as the road are the biggest problem. Right now, some part of the road stuff in a two. It's a coming like when you, when you have butter over ginger head, you see me? So it's affecting. So right now, see a picking in can go to school, see a car by road. Road one. NCB employee charged with a fraud. National Commercial Bank employee Kadeen Thomas has been charged with multiple counts of fraud. She was charged this afternoon after being questioned by fraud squad detectives in the presence of her attorney. Ms. Thomas was arrested on Friday in relation to allegations that she defrauded the accounts of several customers between January 2020 and December 2022 whilst employed to NCB Capital Markets as a wealth advisor. It is alleged that she gained access to the accounts of several customers without authorization by submitting fraudulent encashment request to forms purporting they were signed by the customers. The 35-year-old wealth advisor was initially thought to have defrauded U.S. $30,000, but a follow-up audit has revealed that the figure is U.S. $143,000 or more than 20 million Jamaican dollars. Ms. Thomas is charged with forgery, uttering forged documents, simple larceny, as well as the breaches of the Cyber Crimes Act and the Proceeds of Crime Act. Her lawyer, Bertha Samuels, said she maintains her innocence. She will appear in court on Friday, at which time the attorney said they will apply for bail. The police have done an interview in the presence of her lawyer, the lawyer conducting it was Ms. Journal Smalling, and they have charged her for $143,000 U.S. dollars, and their charges of forgery, uttering forged documents, simple larceny, breaches of the Cybercrime, and Proceeds of Crime Act. We maintain, she maintains her innocence. We are in court on Friday of this week, and we will be applying for bail for Ms. Thomas, and we will see what happens thereafter when we get discovery, that is, what is the evidence against her. We'll certainly have more to say, but for the time being, her plea is that of not guilty. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.